Okay. Well, first I'd like to thank uh, the, uh, uh, the Digital Cellular Center, uh, DCC, for giving this, me, this opportunity. Uh, we work a lot on trouble electricity, and this seminar is called Tribal Electricity. So it's a great pleasure uh, to give this pr presentation. And uh, I will explain to some of the very basic of what about trouble electricity, and then talk about how can we use cellular materials especially fiber-based, uh, paper-based materials uh, be interested in our near future industry and applications. So what, what is the motivation we do this research? You know, uh, we have done uh, energy research for about 20 years. You know, today's power plant is majorly the major power for our city. We also have energy storage for our portable electronics. So those are the well-established technology we are using now. But as we move forward, things are changing because we have, uh, whenever the uh, cell phone appears, smartphone appears, so we each of us have a cell phone, so become a platform for many things. And we want to measure everything, view everything, know everything about our self. So basically, this forms a big data. So as you can see, we want to know our position, at the velocity we are moving, uh, some information for uh, the uh, relate to our health, everything. So there was, this is the era of Internet of Things. Even some of the device, even medical device, become very small. So the question is, how do we power such a small devices? Although each need a very small power. Okay, so that's the object for our research to meet the needs of a new era, the era of Internet of Things. So if you look at uh, from big picture, so what has been changing? Used to be you have a power plant, you have a, a concentrated energy through cables delivered to your home or to your university. So it's a fixed site from concentrated energy sources. But now we move on is that distributed electronics. You know, we have mobile electronics, wearable electronics, which are distributed, some sort of disordered and wireless. So we're from concentrated energy to distributed energy, from ordered application to disordered, wired to wireless. So the world is changing. As number of this increases dramatically, you can see this one, we can have more and more individual electronics around us every day. So that's the reality we are facing. The question, how do we power those mobile electronics? Of course, cable is not the best way to do it. And uh, how do we gonna do it? A battery is one of the uh, choice for those ones, uh, powered electronics, but can we have the energy from the environment in which the device works so that can have sufficient power to for the service of this device? So this is the idea we, we proposed 2006, 2008, we call self-powered nanotechnology. So today this become very popular. People call self-powered, self-powered. We were the first one to raise this uh, concept called self-powered electronics. So this, the idea is good, but how do we uh, start the project to meet the needs, okay? So let's look at the energy around us. If you look at the energy around us, we have energy from each of us, you see, Anything we move, we have biomechanical energy. We have blood flow can have 0.16 watt become electricity. Our breath can have 0.14 watt become electricity. Walking on the average can 11 watt become electric power. So these are theoretical predictions. But the challenge is how? How are we going to uh, effect convert our body motions into electric power? So that's the work we have been doing for the last 15 years or so. And uh, so we're going to present you our applications, use cellular materials for tree-based structure and applications. Okay, so how does it work? So if you have two pieces of materials, uh, one, one is dielectric, the other is dielectric, physical contact get electrostatic charge on the surfaces. If you separate them a distance, you have an electron flow from one electrode to the other one. So this is the back and the forth. You can see power generation as such. So, so this is the tapping force. You generate some small power up to here. So the advantage of this one is give you high voltage and uh, uh, relatively simple compared with any 
existing power technology here. So this is called carboelectric nanogen, PNG, in one mode. Then what's the advantage of this technology? From this voice here, you see, this is the traditional technology we use to generate power. This is one that generates power by our TNG. You can see this has to run a fast pace. Because if you run slow pace, the output will be so low, unusable. But this one runs a slow pace, you can the sufficient output power to lead us so many lives. So theoretically, so means in a lower frequency range, the TNG performance is much more superior compared to the electromagnetic generator, which is what we use. But if you go to higher frequency, the, the electromagnetic generator surpasses the engine here. So in low frequency, we utilize the uh, the uh, the TNG uh, for the purpose. So you can see the advantage of this device as we move on. Okay, so this is the basic idea. Now, what is the physics? What is the basic of this one for our purpose? Let me just see. Okay, as you see this one in the last uh, 10 years, TNG has been worldwide uh, research effort. By now, there are 55 countries uh, have uh, 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 700 uh, units and uh, 4,300 people, uh, scientists, 4,300 scientists around the world doing research related to trouble electricity, uh, trouble electric nano generator. And just in, in Sweden, we have Middle Sweden University, have Lulia University, have the uh, Uppsala University, also have uh, uh, the Stockholm University, a few other places already start to do this research related to TNG. So because the superior performance, uh, the best we have achieved is the power upwards of 500 watt per, per square meter, the efficiency 50% and above. So this is the, uh, just give you a summary what we have done in the last uh, uh, 10 years or so, okay? Then the question, what is the triple electricity? Okay, this is the, this is the concept we appear as we know, but a lot of things we don't know, no. Let me go a little bit about the science here, then we go to application. So when you talk about the trouble electricity, this is the trouble electricity. Everybody knows about it, but if you have a plus rod, rod with the fur, the plus rod get negative charge, the fur get a positive charge. But why the rod get negative charge? Why the fur get a positive charge? This is the basic physics a question has not been answered for a very long time. So we knew it is happening, but this is the basic phenomenon. So trouble electricity has been a long study history. 300 BC, they have record show that until recently, the year 2000, people started this one. But it's a long debate. Some people say this is due to electron transfer. Some say it's an ion transfer. Some material species transfer. All very common because it happens for solid and solid, liquid and solid, liquid and liquid, gas and liquid, anything. Any material can have a triple electricity. So therefore, the, we are lacking of a unified picture to understand this one. So we devote last five, six years to start the fundamental of trouble electricity. And uh, let's see, let me tell you what we have found. Okay, the first case is, is a metal tip. Metal tip contact the surface of dielectric. So in this case, the atomic force might cause tip and different temperature with the substrate <coughs> at another temperature. So contact with the other one, we measure the surface charge. You can say the, the sample is fixed at 313 Kelvin, but the tip goes 330 Kelvin to 433. So you can see the surface charge increases here. So as such, if the, both the sample and the tip have the same temperature, this is the Fermi level of the metal, and this is the electron distribution. Why they have a little tail above the Fermi level? This is called a Fermi Dirac function. So you can see at a finite temperature, it looks like this. And when the two contact, electron transfer to the, to the dielectric side. If you heat more, if you, for example, if you heat the metal a little more, more electron goes to dielectric. So this is what is happening for the metal or dielectric case. And also we try to, to separate, is this due to electron transfer, ion transfer or materials transfer? Our conclusion is, is majority electron transfer. Let me show you. This is the AFM tip, this is the dielectric. And as you see, the contact, if you apply a biased voltage to the metal tip, that means you can tune the Fermi level of the metal 
up and down depends the bias you applied. And you can see experimentally, if you have no bias, if no bias, there's a little triboelectric charge on the surfaces. If you apply negative two volts, you have more charges. If you apply five volts, you have a reverse of charge uh, density here. So this reverse of sign must due to electron. You cannot reverse sign if you have ions here. So therefore, if you apply a, 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 a bias, zero bias, this electron kick into the dielectric. If you have a negative bias, then shift the Fermi level further up, more electron kick into the dielectric side. That means to this case. If you have a positive bias, lower the Fermi level, electron can flow from dielectric to the metal. That's what this case is. So our conclusion is it is due to electron transfer. And this has been well established in many of our papers. Okay. But situation is complicated. Why? We have the case of uh, the trouble electricity curve for anything, for fibers, for cellular materials, which may not have a very good band diagram. So, but we can use this two interatomic uh, uh, model. This is one atom, this is the other atom. Uh, let's say if you squeeze, this is the bonding length, length of the two atoms here. If you squeeze one against the other one, so the distance is short than the bonding length. In this region, you have a maximum overlap of electron cloud, which give you the charge transfer. If you separate a little further more, this can repel the, the, the inter attract region. There's no charge transfer. So why do we have rubber one against the other one to make the maximum overlap of electron cloud so which, in which electron transfer occurs? So we propose this model and it has been proved by many cases here, okay? So how do we explain that? So this is the trouble electricity occurs one rubbing against the other one. How do we explain that one? This one atom, that's the other atom. If you squeeze one against the other one, you bring them closer, okay? The reason you bring them closer is this. You see, before you grow, they are separate too far. The barrier is too high. The electron cannot transfer. But now if you make it shorter, the barrier is lowered, so electron transfer from one atom to the other. So this is the case. Let's see the animation. You can see this case. To dumbbell here, okay, bring them together. You have the overlapped electron cloud. Then the lower the barrier, electron will transfer from one to the other one. So you can see this is a general model for explain trouble electricity for general materials. Can be applied for cellular materials, polymer materials, ceramics materials, almost anything we know. So this is a, just a, a general model uh, we proposed. But interestingly, we, we know that we have audience who are know chemistry very well. Trouble electricity not only occurs for uh, solid and solid, but also liquid. You can see this one. If you have, a, if we rub a, a, a bottle with the paper, you can see this uh, liquid, the water flows here, the attraction occurs. So the, the water is charged. So what happened between the liquid and the solid is very interesting for chemistry and the biochemistry. Let me show you. If you have a solid and a liquid, at the solid surfaces, normally they exist a layer of absorption ions. And then the ions with in the liquid redistribute from an electric double layer. This positive and negative layer here. So you have a potential drop like that. This is called an electric double layer. And this is very, very important for chemistry and biochemistry, even biology, because like blood, uh, the paint, milk, why does suspend? Because the, the existence of this electrical double layer here. But you see, here is assumptions. All the ions are, 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 are the are absorption ions are ions, no electron. But the reason we find is different. So how do we find? We use a, a, a EFM tip. This is a Kevin probe microscopy. We drop one droplet on the surface here, and then they wait it to dry. Then the surface charge occurs because the liquid and solid have electron transfer charge transfer. So we heat up, the electron can be released. So you can see this is the result at 473 Kelvin. Is this curve? 433, 393 Kelvin. You see the decay as a time. If you have room temperature, so it remains on the surface for a very long time. So this gives a way to separate electron transfer from ion transfer. Say how, okay? Here's a diagram show. At the very beginning, at the very beginning, sorry, let's go back. At the very beginning, the surface have no charge. 
you put a droplet of water on that, suddenly trans charge transfer occurs. Now, if you wait to dry, heat up, you have some residual charge remains here. So these are the ions and these are the electrons being uh, leaked out. Then the second drop, and you raise the charge density here, then you heat up to here, ion. Third drop, fourth drop, until sixth drop reach a saturation. This is the ion on the surface here. So basically, what we saw was the final stage. At the very beginning, you must have electron transfer, which is very important, uh, which is different from the used to be what we believe. So basically, the charge density on the surface is fixed. It can be ion occupation or electron uh, occupation. The number of seats available. So once the droplet go more, eventually it's more ion surfaces uh, than electrons. Okay. So why do we uh, why do we interest in this? This revised the electric double layers because originally believed there's only ion absorption on surface. Now we have besides ion absorption by electron absorption on the surface, well, electron transfer between liquid and the solid. So therefore on the surface have both electrons and ions. We experiment measure this one, the distance between electrons is 16 nanometers, the ions 30 nanometers, okay? 30 nanometers so. So this is give you a revision of electrical double layers which have been used for decades in the chemistry and uh, 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 biochemistry as well. So what is the trouble electricity? If you look at the dictionary definitions, this one say trouble electricity is a type of contact electrification in which certain material become electrically charged after they come into contact with a different material. But now we revise this one. This is because say contact electrification is a quantum mechanical electron transfer process that occurs for any materials in any states, in any application environment, even up to 400 degrees C. So therefore we redefine trouble electricity. Okay, so this is the first question, what is trouble electricity? The second one, why trouble electricity make electron flow? Let me just briefly ask this one. This is a little more mathematical, but I'll go very quickly on that. Why electrostatic charge give you current? This is the principle of, of TNG, okay? We know that the conduction current is the mechanism of electromagnetic generator. So we knew that for a very long time. But what we are interested in now is different, is Maxwell's displacement current. Uh, this one is Maxwell's equations used for electromagnetic wave. So here, we need to revise this term, this the displacement current. Besides the polarization of the medium, we need to add additional term here, and which can count for the output of TNG. So we did that a few years ago. The reason why we do this one, you see, this is the medium polarization term. Normally, it is zeros out if you have no electric field. But if you have a trouble electricity here, you have a surface charge here. If the surface charge variation with time, you have displacement current. But this, fun this equation does not include this term in this here. So we need to revise. How do we do that? So we do this one. Sorry, this is a little mathematics here. This is the displacement vector here. You have a medium polarization. And this, the, if you solve the equation, you got this distribution field around here but we have a trouble electricity curse. The existence of this surface charge here bring additional charge on the dielectric. And this dielectric here will introduce additional term to here. So therefore, we modify the displaced vector here. We modify this, you substitute the displaced vector into the Maxwell equations. You can receive a new set of equation. New set of equation here, you have a new surface charge density, new uh, current, you're going to have a, a redefined charge density and current, and you can rev revise this one. So without good detail here, why? Uh, the, what's the difference? The displacement uh, current proposed by Maxwell was due to, uh, for the wave, electromagnetic wave. But when we put additional term here, we introduce the theory of nanogenerates here. We can utilize this equation to calculate the output current, voltage, and the power of TNG. So that's the difference here. So you can see the, the, the difference here is electromagnetic generator, TNG, and the other nano generator here. So this is displacement current governed generator. This is conduction current uh, governed generator. So we have uh, two separate branch of physics here. 
Okay, so what Maxwell did was propose the displacement current, prediction electromagnetic wave, and this is the foundation of the whole world today for communication, for theory of lights and radar and everything. But now if you add one more term in a displacement current, this is due to the non-electric field induced position, which is the theory of nano generators, which is what we did in the last 20 years or so in relate to uh, uh, the piezoelectric nano generator, trouble electric nano generator, and many more, based on which you can expand the Maxwell's equations to a new form. We can solve this one, new, new tools here. So the reason I bring this to you is that everything can be unified into Maxwell's display current. The only thing we add is this term, which was not there before. And by adding this term, we have the foundation of nano generator for the energy and senses that we are interested in. So this is enough for theory. Now let's go to the interesting part, cellular materials. So what about surface charge density? We recently published two papers, and these two papers you can get a look. We measure the surface charge density for 35 different uh, oxide thin films. You some have the, 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 the positive charge, some have negative charge. We measured 55 of the polymer materials, the surface charge density, for the first time, given number on the trouble electricity on the surface here. And this is another gen generic uh, uh, for the uh, materials, which is only being quantified until very recently. And this is our work here. Okay, so nano can use can use it for, for, for any materials, like fiber materials, anything. Let me use start with fiber material based TNG. Okay, if you have a fiber material, have a multiple axle shell structure here, you can even have a piezoelectric material center, you have trouble electric material here, you have another fiber here, make two fiber here, the two fiber contact trouble electricity occurs. This can give a voltage drop between two cores here. Or you can have other property at the core, such as piezoelectric effect, trouble electric effect, you can have different charges created here, and this can be utilize fiber based materials for TNG. This is the basic principle. Let me show you the, the, the work. So we, we made such a fiber. There's a little thick fiber here. It's artificial made fiber here. Inside here, we have the shells. We have even gaps here. So if you squeeze one to the other one, you have the physical contact, you have the charge. Use this one. You can say you, you make a contact, you have the charge transfer occurs, positive next here. And if you set change the gap distance here, you have a voltage. So you can see the output voltage can be 20 volts and the current can be reached about uh, uh, 0.4 microampere current. So just a little fiber, you can have electric signal output for any purpose. For example, you can use this one as sensors. You can use, like if you play golf ball, you put this one on different angles, different uh, different position of your body, you can detect the signal as you move your arm back and forth. This the signal is automatically output by the fiber. You don't have to supply a power for the for the for the fiber, and it's given out automatically. So this is the 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 uh, 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 the uh, fiber based ones, and you can make this uh, uh, this twist uh, entangled fibers. If you slide one against the other one. You can use the contact separation to fiber, give electric signal out. So you can do different this uh, smart fibers. You can put on a uh, around the, the, the arm, anything for medical purpose here. Let me show you the reason. Because you attach different parts of this fiber, entangled fiber, different parts, you get a signal. So they have they are registered signal you can generate. You can have a matrix. You can have a, a physiological detections use fiber based materials, the contact separation between two give you the signal you can detect. So this is the two of these entangled uh, materials. You can put this on the, uh, like gloves, robotics, or on the shape of the body, uh, any arms here, you can have an electric signal out, so give you a smart uh, skin fabrication, smart fabric fabrication, even for robotics. So this can be really a uh, very interesting use. All the biodegradable materials, fiber material, we can fabricate this kind of uh, sensors we are interested in. You can also use this uh, use rock. If you make this one, the rock can be uh, uh, used to, 
two or three different fibers that make this one. If you press this one, it's not only a, a, a power source. You can see this is the rock you made. You press it here, press it here, okay, press it here. And then if you make a matrix, you, you, you type in different part of matrix, you can get a signal output. See the signal flashing. So this can be a smarter rug, a smarter uh, carpenter for smart homes, for uh, for whole healthcare, and many other purposes you are interested in. So you can see this is just a fiber-based materials we are we are we are we demonstrate to you here. And then this is use uh, uh, fabric. You can use a fabric make a a flex type of TNG, and you put in wind, and the wind blow this one. They can generate power. This low power can drive a humidity sensor, a temperature sensor, and send a signal wirelessly to some uh, uh, some distance. So this, for you can see, use uh, when you can use this one for environmental protection, fire protection. You can also use for environmental monitoring, like a large area forest monitoring, which can be very useful for um, make sure the forest are safe, no fire, any other things uh, happening here. So this is use TNG. And this is the one we made before. You see, this is this is around this person. You see, this is a commercial heart beating device. Commercial. This is a lithium battery. We put our TNG around here. So when this guy is walking and running, this TNG start to work. Charge the battery. The battery drive the uh, commercial heartbeat monitor here. And then while they send a signal to Bluetooth here, you can see the signal. Let me show you with this video. So this person is jogging because his heartbeat will go up and this signal automatically recorded by the phone here. So therefore, this is the cell power system you can make by body motions here uh, and use the uh, biological motions. You can detect any kind of physical logic motion here. Fiber is around us. You can buy a smart jacket. We can make it, this use fiber base here. You can put this one detect physiological signal here. If a person breathing, you see this, the, use the fiber-based uh, uh, smart patch. You can make patch different part of cloth here. You can intertwist it. You can all this smart design here. You can be able to achieve some physiological signal detection here. So let me show you how can make this smart shirt here. You can see this little uh, T-shirt can detect a lot of things here. And as you see here, if you make it on a wrist, on a fingertip, on a sock, you can detect your heart beating. You can detect your heart. This is the this is signal from heart beating here, which is very sensitive. Let me show you this video here. You see this is the this is the fingertip sensor here. You can detect the shape of the heart beating here very precisely here. And even we can derive some of the information on such as like a blood pressure for medical care here. Again, this uses fiber-based materials. Use the TNG as the as the mechanism for physiological application here. Okay, this is you detect the heart beating behavior. You can see, put this one attached on the shirts, and you can measure the signal. You can compare the signal with the standard ECG measurements and compares. Let me show you this video. You can see this one. Uh, this is the TNG measurements, the person breathing, and this is the ECG measurement. Both correspond very well with the, this, this is the standard technology measured. You saw the words, is this the measurement? So we see a way for healthcare, for smart jacket, for many things you are interested in. Again, this is based on TNG devices as we are, are present to you here, okay? So you can use the uh, 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 matrix and you see this is the uh, rock based matrix here and the TNG is below here. You're tapping different part. You have a different part. You can see the signal having two different parts. You see the light flashes, and you can you can swap your, your your finger back and forth like this one. So this shows you what you be able to do biological, physiological sensors, matrix, uh, 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 matrix uh, registered uh, devices here. So this will show you that. TNG can be a broad application. Now, let me show you paper-based. You know, a lot of cellular materials, paper-based is, is, is what we use uh, for many purposes. Paper is the, is the cheapest material we can utilize. Uh, we use paper to make a microphone. 
uh, this is a this is a uh, uh, this is a Helmholtz ch uh, resonance chamber here. I use the TNG here, and the, when this speaker make a sound, this can generate trace. Let me show you this one. You can. This is a speak trigger speaker. This is the power generated by this uh, uh, TNG here. So this is a resonance chamber here. You can see this one, and this is, again shows use paper based resonator we'd be able to do that okay so you can see sounds wave tricking sounds are tricking so this was the first generation this is 2014 and we moved on we can record this can be a microphone tng can be a microphone let me let me show you can record the voices at a broad frequent range let me show you a couple of music you can hear this is the this is the sound recorded at plays back you can see use such a microphone. We didn't do any digital filtering. You can record here. Right? You can record all the music and you play back. You preserve 90% of the accuracy of the music. Oops. Let me let me just go back. Okay. So you can see TNG can be a microphone. A TNG can be a sound detector. Let me show you. You can see this is the bloom blown out. The three TNG here. You bloom different positions, and this three TNG here can identify where is the position of the bloom. Hence, the sound wave travel to three different ones to give you a signal. Click here, and they can indicate a signal here. So this is the uh, the resonator sound wave trigger the uh, TNG. Okay. Recently, we make this one much thinner. So we have two pieces of materials here. One with the holes, one with a piece of material. So if it sounds like a trick here, you make a resonate like this. So you can have a contact separation. You can get a sounds wave generated uh, electric signal using TNG here. So this uh, two pieces of paper, one with holes. You can control the density of the holes, uh, shape of holes. You can determine which frequency range you can cover. Let me show you in the next view graph, how do we do this work, okay? This is a hearing aid made of two pieces of papers here, two pieces of paper here. You can change the shape of the paper, the holes. You can, you can change the frequency range to which it responds here. Let me show you a couple of interesting videos here. The first one is a music recording. This is record music. This is the original music. Use this to record the music as a micro, cell power microphone. Then, if I, shift a little faster this is the playback and playback you can see the quality of the sounds is very good it's very good okay. and also use this one can be communicated with uh, uh, ro robots you see put on the ear of robots they can communicate you can see this one see the, if the robot can recognize voice recognition See the Harry can be identified who is talk to him. So first, the, the uh, robots would not identify who the lady is. Now this is a uh, uh, how you guys come here. So you can voice recognition use this one record a voice. They can identify that, and of course, this can be many things. You can see this one. This is also. Micro re record voices, anything again. This is the paper based ones. Okay, let me show you. If you have a thousand books in the library, how do you know which, which book was touched by somebody at a specific time? We do this device, so we make this the, this the books here. We, we build this one in a book here. So, anybody touch this book, the signal will be wireless trans central receiver, receiver will be displayed here. The, between the books and this receiver is wire, a uh, wireless. So therefore, signal transmitted wireless. Let me show you here. Okay, see if you can hear it now. Okay, yes. can you hear now? Huh? Yes. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. So this is the original, original uh, 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 music. Now, if you if we use this as a microphone recorder. Then you can see the playback. And the playback will preserve 
ninety percent accurate. Now let me show the 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 uh, uh, robot. You see this communication with the robot uh, for voice recognition. We we'll put it right here. You can see the voice. Hello, Harry. A test. Okay. If the Hello, Harry. So this lady come and say hello to the Harry and see if this Harry can re recognize who. Uh, is. Hello. Who are you? They, they cannot recognize who the lady was. Hello, Harry. Okay. You fine? Hello. Doctor Wong? So the, the Harry now can recognize who talked to him, right? Talk to him, okay? So this is the voice hello. recognition here. And now this one is for the the books registration. From here, the books we hear is uh, is uh, is uh, signals transmit here. You can see that, okay? You can see trans here. All right. And uh, you can even touch which line. You can see you touch a special line. Come here. So this is all related to paper based paper based product. If you have a um, hundred thousand books here, we can know at what time who touch which volume we can be a very good device because we only need the one receiver for the entire room okay so let me go fast we have lots to show a little roberts here okay this is cellular materials we can sell all materials we can make a tng you can use different sensor techniques to measure this this is pros materials you can make a tng here you can put in the socks can identify of physiological uh, signals as you wish. So therefore, the big advantage is that we can use any material you have for different purposes uh, of uh, you are interested in. Okay. And then, let's see. Uh, this is for air filter. You can see we use these uh, uh, paper-based materials here. Make a composite. And we even you know, we can filter the 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 the, the, the dust in, in 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 the air. This is PM two point five. You see, this is the our TNG mask. This is the normal cotton-based TNG uh, mask. You can see our performance is much better than the cotton-based T uh, mask here. And so we reach 98.94% of this uh, removing uh, efficiency. And even also this one can be utilized for uh, antibacterial, maybe also can be used for antivirus application here. So this is a, uh, is a demonstration we did some time ago. Let me show you here. Okay. Okay. Paper base, you can be for the papers in different arts. You can make a different, like a uh, the little, little, like little, this uh, uh, music equipment. You can put this one because contact separation can give you electric signal. So you can make two pieces of paper with different uh, shape of electro here that can give you signal out and make a, a little power source or sensors here. So this one can be good for kids because kids can play this one. They can not only as a uh, a uh, power source, but also can have some kind of a, a sensor here. So this is use paper-based materials here. You can use the uh, paper-based material, make an interlocked foldable art here, and uh, utilize the uh, contact separate between different pieces here. You have output, you see, the voltage output can be 90 volts. The current can be reached like what? A few microampere current. So this is for paper-based materials you can utilize for uh, some kind of sensor work, some kind of uh, smart walls, and you can utilize this for those too. So those ones are the, uh, again, paper-based TNG. Sports and furnitures. Okay, this is all wood-based materials uh, made uh, 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 structure here, okay? We have a ping pong table. I know in Sweden, ping pong uh, sports is very popular. So here you can make different our TNG below the surface layers here, below the surface layer here, and then we can detect metrics by metrics, and then we can study all the different characteristics of individual person plays, and also the person uh, can study the, the behavior of the person play this ping pong ball. Let me show you this one. So this is the metrics below that, our student do that. So this can identify if the ball hit the upper rim, or the lower rim here. Let me show with the video so you can know it's a valid ball or invalid ball. Let me show you this one. Okay, you can see the ball hit the upper rim. This is a valid ball because on upper rim. And then the next one is the ball hit the side 
you can see the ball hit the side yeah invaluable this is invaluable but if you use the iron to catch that it's impossible it goes too fast even sometimes use the fast camera is not enough so this one is 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 basically a really helpful sport you can for ten value volleyball for uh, sports anything here you can utilize this for the reason is that because if you hit it there's an electric signal immediate output you know, one change here one change here different signal output so this can be very good for smart furniture here. Not only those, you can embed in this one, you can study the, the, the possibility, the probability, the ball hit different units. In the number four, you have a signal. Number three, you have a signal. Number one, you have a signal. You can study the statistics as well, the big data of a, a player. Let me show this one, okay? When the ball hit the different parts, you can make a matrix. If the, the ball hit the different parts, they record it. They record it's too too fast the ball go too fast you can see that flashes so this one can be for smart furniture smart doors all these kind of things is a so powered system for the for the furnitures here now uh, look at the forward what are the big industrial uh, impact of this uh, TNG okay ever since it was invented by us in 2012 eight years ago a lot uh, recently this uh, is this uh, company called this uh, Editech uh, uh, EX. Okay, Editech. This is the website you can get the report. They pro the projection the TNG for energy harvesting and sensing between 2020 and 2040. They give billions of dollar business of TNG itself. This is, have a um, hundreds of page of market research here. Just TNG can contribute to distributed generations. Distributed energy that can be from up to 2040, they can have $350 billion market for distributed energy. But of course, this includes wind, wind energy, solar energy, many things. So if we can have a little share for TNG, which is also very significant here. Okay, so this is the TNG for energy here. We also make uh, this one move to industry as well. Let me show you some parts. Okay, and uh, this is the mask. Now here, you see this is the, the uh, use of the trouble uh, electricity as the, as the mechanism for air filter filtering, also anti antibacterial here, and this is the product here, and uh, it's being shipped around the world, especially around this coronavirus, uh, this, uh, this is a fact of part of life around the world, and this mask is, is, is very useful for these purposes. We started developing this three years ago, and now it's become uh, a, a good, uh, for the healthcare and our medical applications here. So therefore, it's can trouble electricity can be a good dust remover, but also can be antibacterial. Uh, it, can, it can kill 99% of the bacterial. We are doing measurement right now on antivirus right now, and then we'll tell the number once we got it. So, but I think it should be effective use the high voltage to kill the, 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 the virus. So this is another one. And this is the measurement. If we put different nanomaterial surface fibers, we can have a anti-bacterial uh, application here, which shows very effective for, for remove those bacterial as well as the dust uh, purpose as well. So this one, we try to improve all the quality of the air filters in many different ways. And we hopefully can reach the uh, uh, market very soon. Okay, and this now is the, we, we have a startup company called Nair Turn. Uh, Nair is called Nano Air and the TNG. So Nair Turn is the company name. So we, we, we fabricate the, the, the air filter for, uh, for office space, for, for uh, laboratories, uh, even homes for central air uh, dust removal. But also we try to hopefully add uh, antibacterial, antivirus function to this one. I think it's very essential for home and office to need this one uh, to, to improve the quality of our life. And, uh, and, and, and uh, I think this can be a very important product for the worldwide uh, need. Okay, so this is, we are developing this one called Nair Turn uh, device here. So today I just, uh, utilize the cellular materials, paper-based material, fiber-based material as example to show you the TNG application here. I, I cover a little bit about the, uh, the origin of trouble electricity, 
Now also the wider the the current flows here, so give you a little bit about the Maxwell displacement current, tell you the physics origin of TNG, and then illustrate some application here. We have a lot more applications related to as micro nano power source, a solar power source uh, sensors, blue energy harvesting, and even high voltage source. Uh, I have a video to show you. This video was recorded on January 1st, 2013. And when just a year after TNG was invented, and I was interviewed by CNN, show the market. Let me show you this one. You can see. A battery breakthrough by here, U.S. scientists no, right here at the Georgia Institute of Technology. Zhong Lin Wang and his research team have invented a battery that can be charged simply by walking. Physical movement. The battery converts the physical energy of walking into chemical energy and then stores it. Now this power cell can then convert that to electrical energy on demand. The battery can harness enough energy to power a small calculator right now. The battery has been named one of Physics World's magazine's top 10 inventions of 2012. And joining me is the inventor himself, Zhang Lin Wang, a professor at Georgia Tech. Glad to have you with us. Sorry the football team didn't do any better, sir. But the battery's doing great. Show us what this is and explain a little bit about it. So this is something going to uh, change our future living of life. This, what I have is that what we call nano generate this convert tiny physical motion into electricity and what I have is about 10 LED lights once I blow this with my breath you can see the LED light blows okay. and so that would be equivalent to charging the battery yes it can be used it's to do that miniaturization version one but show me inside this okay I don't know if I believe you get a close-up of this now our lights may be too bright on this to show but I saw it working in the dark oh there we go See that green light coming on? All right, now, so if I put this on my car, driving down the road and had wind blowing through it, I'm gonna be generating electricity? Exactly, this is, you can put it anywhere you want. By as long as tiny physical motion, you can put it on your skin, on the uh, on the road, in your shoes, on your window, whatever is tiny physical motion, like my breathing, can lit up this 10 LED. That means we have about 50 volts generated. When we miniaturize this one into a small device and inside anywhere battery, so we have a one device. So that that device, as we see there, is just like a, about the size of a, a, a nickel or yeah. a you know a, you know not even as big as a euro. Right. So then miniaturize this one inside here. You have a full self-charging power pack. We don't call it battery because it has a energy converter and a battery function. So therefore, once you use this one, you walk. And this is charging and ready to use. So it's it's more than a battery. More than a battery. You're charging this one up. I see there's yeah. a plus on this side. Yeah. I assume the other side would be a minus. Yeah. And so I'm using that. And if I move it like this, I'm charging it. When you put it under the sh shoes, in your shoes, when you're walking, you I think we have a this. picture of that. Yeah. Uh, a picture of that, of how it would work if you would have it on the on the sole of your shoe, the way that it would work in order to create electricity. Now, if I were, does it work with centrifugal force? In other words, if I were to put it on a wheel, the wheel of a car, and go around and exactly. around, would it do it? Yes, this is because wheel can drive this one, much bigger ones, cycle by cycle, that's you harvest the energy and store it and ready to use for other purposes. Big question, I mean, how, how long till this technology, when do I see it in my life? What can I use it for? I have been working on this technology for eight years, and now it's well established to for applications. I think it's next three, five years we're going to find some true applications in our real life. Now, as it stands now, I mean, you're charging a battery and that can be used to charge anything, mostly small electronics right now. Uh, even we look for small electronics, for example, like uh, cell phones, uh, IP3 player, but we look for big too. If we put this one in the future in the ocean wave, we can have the ocean wave energy for our large scope energy need. So we think we look at the small, but we have to look forward for the big. So so this can be, you can take it to a much larger size. We can scale up, yes, much scale, or large scales. And this, according to our calculation, this is one cubic meter. One cubic meter gives you 30,000 watt. 
of energy. 30,000 watts, that's a lot. Yeah, so this, I, we look at this small but nanotechnology to one day change the life or leave. We look at small but can solve more big problems. Congratulations to you and your team. I can't wait to see the finished product as we come out. This is something, this is something that could really uh, change the way that all of us charge our batteries and can solve a lot of problems. We'll wait and see. I don't think we know what all of the uh, the potential is here. We're going to find out, thanks to uh, Dr. Wang and his team. Okay. Oops. Okay. Uh, I have one here. You can see this one. I hope you can see on the video. And this, this. Uh, I hope you can see this. Can you see the flashing? It's kind of mirrored a little bit in light. Oh, mirrored. Okay. Can you see now? Oh, not I easy. Huh? See, yeah, you need to hold it in the right angle. I can see a gear now. At least. Okay. Let me put the, just a second. Let me see this one. I can see. Yeah, it's a. Yeah, now we see it. You see it, right? <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah. This, this one, you see, this just make a little contact between the two layers here. I made this one as a, a small gift to some people I meet. I'll say, oh, yeah, nano generator, this is how to work. This kind of happening. Okay, so this is the thing for that. And uh, uh, I hope that uh, uh, yeah, I used one, I'll give you an uh, introduction what the TNG is. Uh, what the basic physics and what is uh, uh, the application can be used cellular materials for that. The big advantage is this one, you can use literally any material to fabricate TNG. Uh, you can be biodegradable materials, environmental degradable materials, paper-based, cellular-based, anything based. So I think the, uh, if you can see the cost of materials, it's really low. Even the fabrication techniques is, is, is really at, uh, low cost. So that's why I anticipate it can have a broad range of application. Uh, in many things we can foresee in the near future. So uh, I, I thank you, give me this great opportunity to present our work and hopefully uh, more uh, students get excited and join the research and we can create more things in the near future. And I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. Thank you very much, Song Ling Wang. I, I'm really I'm fantastic. I cannot find any other word for it. And as excellent presentation here, spanning all the way from basics, Maxwell's equations, on to, up to applications, really mind-boggling applications and perspectives, including at the end also the large-scale energy production. So I would be surprised if there are no questions in this auditorium. So here is one question from Daniel Söderberg. Thank you for a very interesting presentation. I might have missed this. But what use of uh, is the conversion efficiency, mechanical en energy to electrical energy, uh, present state and potential and future? OK, very good, very good question. <clears throat> we did a lot of measurements on the, on the efficiency. Uh, because TNG have uh, four different modes. One is the contact separation, the other one is sliding motion. And uh, uh, we did a careful measurement for the efficiency. If you uh, talk about the, uh, the sliding mode, we get a 50% of efficiency uh, uh, from mechanical to electric uh, uh, power. But if you say, well, if I slide too fast, they have the, the, the heat generated. That's true because the, uh, the heat, uh, the, uh, the generation is a problem once run fast. But recently in the Lulia University, uh, Professor Xu published a paper. Uh, he utilized the lubricants, a layer of oil lubricants, but a very special uh, oil. It's used a low, uh, the, a low uh, the permittivity oil can prevent the, the, uh, the trouble friction, but at the same time, improved trouble electric performance for that. So we, uh, so the annual question is that we re reached about 50% of efficiency and also can be higher, for example. They say, why do you mean by higher? Because the, if I use the mechanical trick is once, if you only convert once, you have a small efficiency. But if you have 
residual oscillation afterward can be continued converting electricity, you can reach even 85%. So, so, we, so PNG have advantage to convert slow motion into a higher uh, frequency resonator for uh, effective energy conversion. That's why I say, we always say efficiency can be 50% to 85%. Okay, thanks. There is another question from Isaac Enquist. How about the face masks? I don't understand how they work. Are they killing viruses using high voltage? Yeah, <clears throat> the way it works, let me, let me show you. I, 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 I have. I have the one in front of me, uh, this one, this one, okay. The way it works inside here is two layers, two layers, uh, uh, basically more than two layers, okay. So if you, before you wear the mask, you, you press it like that, okay. So between the layers, the trouble electricity occurs, trouble electricity occurs, can be a, a couple of hundred volts. So if, you, if the particle, if the particle come in, the 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 the, uh, the electrostatic attraction we catch the particles, but if you have a little virus coming here, it also the 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 local electric field also ca catch the the virus uh, the the uh, virus and and the uh, bacteria because they are particle anyway. So therefore, if you have electric field, they can catch both. So, so it's like a self-powered electrostatic filter. Basically. Exactly, exactly, exactly. I have one question uh, concerning the large scale energy production prospects. Uh, what, what do you see as the biggest potential for this to produce large um, amounts of power electricity? Okay. Very good question. I did not present here because the, uh, the focus of this uh, uh, talk is on uh, cellular materials. We work on so-called blue energy. So we make, a, for example, like a, a, a tennis ball size. So in the ball size here, uh, we make a, a shell, ball, a sh core and a shell structure. So put it in a water wave, the inside ball is rolling back and forth, so co cause contact and separation with the our shells. And this one can give electric output. And then say by how much? We can all reach like a three milliwatts on the average of power. But now let's say if we can reach 10 milliwatts of each unit, now we make a units, units, another unit into a grid, into a 3D grid. We can get a huge power uh, output. Theoretically, let me give you the number. Let me give you a number. If you have a surface area of ocean, 400 kilometer uh, by 400 kilometer area, 400 kilometer, 400 kilometer, one meter depth of water. If you use this networking general electric power, if we can reach the theoretical uh, uh, estimation, we can have uh, 1.6 terawatt, 1.6 terawatt. That's 10% of the world power consumption. You see 400 by 400 on the surface area of ocean is not that big because you can have the energy day and night without the interruption by weather, by, by evening or so. And also use the area of the ocean, which is, cannot be used for shipping or other things. So I think with that one, you can have a sustainable power generation. So we call blue energy harvesting water wave energy into electric power. So if you are interested in this one, I can give you another uh, one hour talk on water, uh, water energy harvesting. Yeah, I, I think we need to let the other presenters in, but we have three more here. Maybe one here I see here from Jalmar Granberg. What do you think are the biggest challenges with this technology? Uh, uh, 2014, I wrote a review article, at least 10 questions, 10 major challenges here. But now we already solved six or seven of that one. So what's the big challenge? Number one, the right materials. What's the best material for the performance? Number two, how do you improve the robustness? So this can be last longer, last longer. So durability, lifetime is the bigger concern right now. The third one is that how do you package them up? If you package them up, so no water infiltration, so it can work sustainably. So I think still the big challenge is sustained uh, stability and also the, the lifetime. But the reason more progress made on that, number one, it utilized 
uh, a spring lay structures. So you can have, uh, don't have to be rubbing every second, every cycle, only rubbing once in a while. Uh, the second one is used like uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, 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 lubricants, as like a Professor Xu demonstrated uh, uh, from Lulia University. That can be another approach. The third approach is that we can utilize the different materials to improve that. So, in, so the three, four different approaches try to solve this problem. But I think that's the major challenge we are facing right now. We hope to get something good done in the near future.